Hey everyone, Nexus here. Lately, I've been considering taking some of the videos that are performing well and expanding that into a series. So I thought, if I was a viewer, what would I like to see as a series on this channel? I've had a few perspective ideas, but I thought that the unheard of serial killers would be a great one to start off with. Hopefully, the community we've all built so far agrees with me and will enjoy learning about some sinister killers they probably hadn't heard of before from different parts of the world. So here is the second video in what I'm hoping will be an ongoing series of unheard of serial killers. Real quick though, today we're going to venture into the Central European area of the world. But feel free to sound off in the comments and let me know if you'd like to see more unheard of videos and if so, what countries or regions I should dive into next. And don't forget to like and subscribe as it's the most effective way to ensure that the algorithm is kind to these videos, getting them in front of more eyes and growing the channel. Now let's get into it. Joachim Kroll can be seen as Germany's Jeffrey Dahmer, except that Kroll killed 14 people before anyone knew who Dahmer was. Born in Silesia, in what is now the Polish city of Zabs, Kroll grew up as the sixth child in a family of nine. His father was a coal miner who wound up as a prisoner of war during World War II. During that time period, the Kroll family moved west to the region of North Rhine-Westphalia. Kroll's reign of terror started in 1955. His first victim was 19-year-old Ermgard Strell, whom Kroll violated, stabbed, and mutilated. Kroll's other victims included 15-year-old Manuel Knott, whom Kroll murdered, violated, and cannibalized in July 1959, 13-year-old Petra Gies, who died around Easter 1962, and 20-year-old Ursula Rowling in September 1966. Kroll managed to get away with this bloodletting thanks to shoddy police work. Other men were accused and convicted of Kroll's crimes, including Vincent Kuhn, who was convicted of the Gies murder. Walter Quicker was the prime suspect in the murder of 13-year-old Monica Taffel and eventually took his own life. Adolf Schickel, Rowling's boyfriend, was suspected in her murder and also took his own life. For 21 years, Kroll killed, mutilated, and cannibalized victims all along Germany's Ruhr Valley. His luck ran out in July 1976 when Kroll casually told one of his neighbors that the toilet that they shared was clogged up with entrails. When the neighbor told the police about the 43-year-old man's strange confession, investigators arrived at Kroll's apartment and found a liver, two lungs, two kidneys, and a heart cooking on Kroll's stove. The body parts that the police discovered came from a four-year-old girl and that girl was none other than a missing child named Marion Ketter. At his trial, Kroll admitted to murdering 14 people. As for why he practiced cannibalism, Kroll said matter-of-factly that eating human flesh cut down on his monthly grocery bill. Kroll was sentenced to life in prison and died there of a heart attack in 1991. By his own admission, German truck driver Volker Eckert thought a lot about killing before finally committing his first murder. Born on July 1, 1959 in communist East Germany, Eckert committed his first murder in 1974 when he was just 15. The victim attended the same school as Eckert and was a year younger than him. Eckert strangled the girl and made her death appear to be a suicide. This con was swallowed by the adults of the town of Plown for decades. All of Eckert's subsequent murders fit a pattern. He would strangle sex workers to death in various countries. Many of Eckert's victims were drug addicts, illegal immigrants, or just simply overlooked women. Unfortunately, helping Eckert's case was the fact that the police in different European nations often did not interact with each other during the heights of his killing spree the mid-1990s to the early 2000s. 
Tragically, Eckert was well known to police officials in East Germany. Between 1988 and 1994, he served a 12-year sentence for the rape and assault of an unidentified woman. When he got out of prison, Eckert got a job as a truck driver, which allowed him to visit European countries as diverse as Italy, France, Switzerland, and Spain for work. Between 2001 and 2006, Eckert supposedly killed five sex workers, one Kenyan immigrant in France, a 24-year-old Spanish sex worker, a Russian immigrant in Catalonia, a 28-year-old Polish immigrant in Reims, and a pregnant 20-year-old Bulgarian woman living in Spain. Eckert is also suspected of killing seven other sex workers between 1987 and 2004. He was finally caught in 2006 after a surveillance camera captured images of his truck at the scene of the final murder. When Eckert's truck was seized by police near Cologne, they discovered graphic photographs of Eckert's victims, some of which showed him torturing the unfortunate women. Eckert would escape justice again in 2007 when he managed to take his own life inside of his cell in Beirut. Thirty-year-old nurse Peter Zelenka thought that his job was to test the doctors who worked at his hospital. Sadly, Zelenka's tests almost always resulted in the deaths of patients. Between May and September 2006, seven patients at an intensive care unit in the Czech town of Havlikov Broad died suddenly. None of the victims had been considered especially terminal cases, and in fact, all had been expected to live. Zelenka, the man responsible for the seven deaths, was arrested in December 2006 by Czech police officers. Investigators discovered that Zelenka had given the victims the blood-thinning drug heparin without their knowledge. Zelenko would administer the drug via a secret vial and he would do so in such large doses that most of the victims died of internal bleeding. Zelenko would later confess to trying to kill three other patients, but each attempt ended in failure. Shockingly, Zelenka had worked at the hospital for seven years prior to the murders and had had several run-ins with the hospital's authorities. He was sentenced to life in prison in February 2008. Jürgen Bartsch was born with a whole lot of bad luck. An illegitimate child whose mother died of tuberculosis not long after his birth, Bartsch grew up in the care of nurses. At just under a year old, Jürgen was adopted by a butcher living in the Rhineland town of Langenberg. Unfortunately, the butcher's wife suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder and she prohibited Jürgen from playing with other children out of the fear that he would become dirty and sick. Jürgen, an abused and damaged young man, was further traumatized when his parents took him out of his beloved school and forced him to enter a strict Catholic school where discipline was along military lines. Between 1962 and 1966, Bartsch murdered four other boys, and he would later tell police that he had attempted or at least planned to murder hundreds more. In most cases, Bartsch would lure his victims to an empty air raid shelter located in Heger Street and then beat them mercilessly. What Bartsch did next was truly disturbing. He would tie his victims up, strangle or stab the victims to death, violate them, and then cut open their corpses in order to empty the stomach and chest cavities. Barch was only caught in 1966 after one of his victims, 15-year-old Peter Fries, managed to escape the air raid shelter thanks to a candle that Jürgen left behind at the scene. In December 1967, Barch confessed to his crimes and was sentenced to 10 years of juvenile detention. He would die nine years later in April 1976 after a botched castration operation. He was given too much anesthesia. Roger Andermatt, a seemingly normal nurse from Lucerne, is the most prolific serial killer in Swiss history. 
On January 29, 2005, Andermatt, known as the Death Keeper of Lucerne, was sentenced to life in prison for murdering 22 of his patients. Most of Andermatt's victims resided at nursing homes and were between the ages of 66 and 95. Andermatt typically carried out his crimes by first injecting his victims with lethal doses of tranquilizers, then he would use plastic bags to smother them to death. When not working with elderly patients at nursing homes, Andermatt was a dance teacher and moonlighted as a DJ under the name ROG. Andermatt and his defense team actually tried to convince the Swiss jury that the 36-year-old nurse killed his victims out of sympathy. Namely, Andermatt claimed that he no longer wanted to see the elderly patients suffer and hit upon the idea of killing them as a benevolent act. Although initially tried for 22 killings, Andermatt actually admitted to 27 murders in total. Somewhat ironically, euthanasia is actually legal in all of the Swiss cantons that Andermatt killed in, but Andermatt failed to follow the nation's strict compliance regulations. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know what you think about these cases in the comments. Till next time, stay safe out there.